app for entertainers. That's right. You can have your own mobile app where your followers can hear your shows or music, watch your videos, and view all your social networks in one place. You can even make money with banner ads and send push notifications directly to your audience to make sure they get your messages. Everyone has their phones on them, right? A mobile app will add credibility to your brand because your content will be accessible to them while they're on the go. BV Mobile Apps also makes apps for bloggers, actors, and producers. The process only takes about 20 minutes. Just go to bvmobileapps.com and click Get Started Now. That's bvmobileapps.com and tell them the Doug Stewart Show sent you. <laughs> Doug Stewart Show, Fantastic Freaky Funny Football Friday. We need to get into this college football. We got so many things we got to get into. Uh, we need to get into this college uh, football talk here. We will. We'll also hit some NFL coming up in a few. We got the Ball Penis Award we got to give away. We got entertainment we got to do. So a lot to get into. Uh, quickly, though, in the you know informal quick little poll thingy that I did about pumpkins before we went to the break, Overwhelmingly, black people don't eat pumpkins. <laughs> Except for Thorny. Yeah, overwhelmingly. Uh, I'm looking at these votes. Nay, no, nay, no. Hell no, I don't eat no damn pumpkins. I mean, that's all I'm seeing up and down in this chat room on Spreaker.com. Thank you for uh, participating in our vote. Four zero four three eight two zero three three eight. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. Let's talk a little bit of college football with the Funky Four. Yes, sir. The four most interesting games that I'm looking forward to this weekend. Let's start out with number four. You've got number three, Clemson, taking on the North Carolina State Wolfpack. After just one 40-yard play in the first five games of the season, the Tigers had three plays longer than 40 yards in the first quarter of last week's 56-10 victory over Boston College and the Eagles' top-ranked defense. Uh, Clemson's a 18-point favorite at Death Valley, taking on North Carolina State. Todd, Wolfpack not doing too bad, though. They're 4-1 on the year. But uh, they're probably going to go wear an ass cut this weekend. That's game number four. 
Game number three is another ACC matchup that I'm kind of looking forward to. Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons taking on the Florida State Seminoles. Dalvin Cook, man, is getting this man on. After rushing for a total of just 208 yards in his first three games, he amassed 557 yards on the ground in his last three. The Miami native went off against his hometown team last week with 150 yards rushing and 59 more on a touchdown reception that brought the Seminoles to within three points. Uh, Florida State favored by 21 in this game. Wake Forest, though, another good record in the ACC, 5-1. So we'll see. But Florida State, 21-point favorite in Tallahassee. Game number two on the Funky Four college football games this weekend is the Wisconsin Badgers taking on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Classic Big Ten matchup. The number eight Badgers are rested after a bye week. And after a seven-point loss to Michigan, Wisconsin could be scratched off the contender list for the college football playoff at midseason with a second defeat. So this is a big one for Wisconsin. Wisconsin is in the midst of a rigorous part of the Big Ten schedule. Uh, coming off a of bye week once again, the tough loss in Michigan and facing this big-time Ohio State team on Saturday who always plays fantastic. Wisconsin, 10-point underdog in this matchup. Ohio State should come away with the victory. And the number one game that I'm looking most forward to in college football this weekend is the Alabama Crimson Tide taking on the Tennessee Volunteers. Yeah. The Vols, 5-1, 2-1-1 in the Southern Conference, scored three touchdowns over the final eight minutes of the fourth quarter last weekend to send the game at Texas A&M into overtime. Uh, Tennessee's seventh turnover of the game, though, in the second overtime session resulted in a 45-38 loss. Earlier this season, the Volunteers game uh, came from 17-7 to down at Georgia to win 34-31 on a Hail Mary. They overcame a 21-0 second quarter deficit to beat Florida 38-28. They erased a 14-0 deficit to beat Virginia Tech 45-24. And they overcame a 13-3 halftime deficit to beat Appalachian State to win 2013 in overtime by recovering, or recovering a fumble in the end zone. So they've been the comeback cardiac kids all year long. Running back Jalen Hurd was out due to lower extremity, uh, extremity injury. Alvin Kamara picked up the slack with the 20, 127 yards rushing. Hurd is expected, and we're talking about Jalen Hurd, he's expected to be back for Alabama this weekend. All right? Tennessee is a 13-point underdog at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, that's the number one Funky Four game I'm looking forward to this weekend in college football. And there you have it. The Funky Four. Yes, sir. The four biggest games in college football this weekend on the home front. Georgia Tech hosts Georgia Southern. That's Paul Johnson's old school that he had such a great uh, he had great success with for so many years down there in Statesboro, Georgia. And uh, Vanderbilt uh, takes on Georgia this weekend in Athens between the hedges. Those are your Funky Four and your two games locally here in ATL, Metro ATL in Georgia that I'm looking most forward to. Once again, the Funky Four. Yeah. Thank you for joining me on the Doug Stewart Show. Fantastic, freaky, funny football Friday coming up in about seven minutes. We've got a little entertainment news, some birthdays, an entertainment story uh, that we're going to throw out there as well, I believe. And uh, we still got to give away the Ball Penis Award a little bit later today. The Buster of the Week in Sports and Entertainment. Your nominees, and you can vote for it at the Doug Stewart Show Facebook group. You'll see the poll there at the top of the Doug Stewart Show Facebook group. Your nominees for the Buster of the Week in Sports Entertainment and Beyond is Ben Carson, Floyd Mayweather Jr., Tom Brady, Loose Neck Cy the Stewie, very disappointing, Stephen A. Smith, Wyclef Jean for saying Young Thug is a modern-day Tupac. I think we should just go ahead and give it to them. <laughs> Wyclef. Now, nah, we're not going to circumvent the democratic process. Go ahead and vote. And your last nominee was Donald Trump, which really started all of these Buster nominees and, and their trek to winning a Buster this week for saying out loud that he sexually assaults women. Uh, sometimes he just starts kissing them without them even saying anything. 
And then he likes to grab them by uh, the vagina. It's going to be hard to beat Donald Trump, I think. Uh, I mentioned yesterday, if you haven't heard, there's been a lot of women that have come out since Donald Trump, uh, you know, that statement of Donald Trump, you know, back from 2005 saying that he grabs women by the uh, JJ. There's been a lot of women that have come out and says, yeah, Donald Trump has made a move on them and grabbed them for JJs and, you know, slammed his tongue down their throats unwarningly or whatever. There's been a lot of women that have come out and said that. So Donald Trump, um, in replying to those, to those uh, accusations, has said that they're lying. <laughs> he said that they're lying and he's actually going to file a lawsuit against these women. First of all, I don't know how you can file a lawsuit about uh, a woman or anybody saying something. You know, you can't prove that it's not true. You can't prove that it is true. So that's ridiculous. I think that's just posturing. And the, and the crazy thing about it all is Donald Trump is now saying that these women are lying about him grabbing their poo nanny when he actually said it in his own recording saying that he grabs women's poo nannies. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. He's calling these women liars when he said it. I grabbed them by uh, the poo nanny. But now he's saying they're lying. Okay, got you, Donald Trump. Got you. There's people out there still going to vote for this guy, though. There's people out there still defending him. I saw this little clip of Herschel Walker. Lord, please help Herschel Walker. I saw Herschel Walker defending Donald Trump in the comments that he made. Now, the problem with Herschel Walker, whenever Herschel Walker talks, you got to remember, Herschel Walker has split personalities. So I don't know if it was Herschel Walker or it was the other Herschel Walker. <laughs> the split personality Herschel Walker. In the chat room on Spreaker.com, Tiffany Sports and Heel says, what if my name was Pumpkin, laughing my ass off? Uh, it's funny you say that. Is your, is your nickname Pumpkin, uh, Tiffany Sports and Heels? My mother's nickname is Pumpkin, and we don't, we don't, you know, we say it real countryfied. We don't, we don't include the, uh, uh, the M. Uh, it's Pumpkin, P-U-N-K-I-N. Evidently, the story is when my mother was very young. Um, if you've seen pictures of my mother on Facebook that we posted before, my mother is very uh, light skinned bright skin, and she says when she was very small, her hair was actually orange, and my uncle Donnie and my uncle Mike and all of the little kids in the neighborhood called her pumpkin because her hair was orange. <laughs> True story. But my mother is, she might be 65 years old, and everybody in my family on my mother's side still calls her pumpkin. She's almost 70 years old, and she still gets called her nickname as a, as a little kid growing up in, in my hometown, uh, a pumpkin. Classic. Classic. Hey, if you went to an HBCU, we're going to go to a break here in a second. If you went to an HBCU, your band probably played this, but not as good as my band, the Marching 101. We'll be back in three minutes. Experiencing tough times lately? Is your man not eating the potato salad the way he used to? 
Things a little stressful at work? Well, I'm sure your girls have told you that there's a new spot in town.